Hey everyone, welcome to Live Your Language, where I talk all about how to raise bilingual children. I'm Stephanie, a PhD student in second language acquisition and a mother to a son that I'm raising bilingually in my non-native language, which is French. So we know that the most important thing in raising a bilingual child is the quality and the quantity of the minority language input that they receive. We know there are tons of fantastic ways to do this, from having them attend a bilingual school, to hiring a caregiver that speaks the minority language, to even setting up play dates and meetings with other families that speak the minority language. However, we shouldn't think that the way to get a bilingual child always has to be so drastic. Those are great ways, but there are also tons of little things we can do every single day that increase the minority language for the child. So today I'm going to talk about seven simple ways that you can increase the quality and the quantity of the minority language that your child hears every day. The first tip I want to talk about is routines. Routines are a really great way to increase the minority language spoken in your home simply because they're easy wins. You say them time and time again every single day, so it makes it way easier for your child to internalize the language that you're saying. We know that repetition is so important when you're learning a new language, but it's not always natural to repeat things. The thing about routines is it makes it completely natural and sometimes even enjoyable to hear the same thing over and over again. With morning and evening and mealtime routines, you can make sure that your child hears the same language over and over again, and pretty soon they'll be able to repeat um, the last words or last few words of whatever uh, prompt that you're giving them. Another great thing to incorporate in your routines are songs. Not only are they repetitive, but they're extremely catchy, which means that they're going to stick in your child's brain even more easily. So in our house we have a teeth brushing song and it makes it really easy A to prompt him to start making his way to the bathroom to start brushing his teeth, but also it makes it so that those words in that song, teeth, toothbrush, toothpaste, those are all words that he knows the meaning now and he hears every single day. Another thing that I'll do throughout the day to increase the minority language that my son hears is simply to avoid the majority language. I personally have decided not to use the majority language with my son. However, when my husband is around, I will address my husband in English, but I will not address my son in English. This choice depends on the uh, language method that you're using. Personally, as I'm using one parent, one language, this just makes sense. Uh, but I know there are a lot of different variations um, and various reasons why people decide not to do this. There is a study that shows that children actually adjust to what type of language you accept. One parent would periodically accept the majority language along with the minority language, while the other parent was very uh, strict and didn't really accept answers in the majority language. It turned out that over time, the child adjusted the amount of the majority language that she used with each parent based on what she found had been acceptable in the past. That leads me to the next thing that I do every day to reinforce the minority language, and that is to redirect any majority language responses into the minority language. I'm not saying to completely ignore your child every time they use the majority language. I'm simply saying you can use it as a teaching moment. You can use a recast, which is just rephrasing the response in a way that reflects what you wish they would have said. However, I know that there are parents who decide to get creative, especially with their older children. For example, Adam Beck has described one method that I think is pretty funny. He says that when his kids make a request to him in the majority language, he responds, but he does it very, very slowly to the point that they get so frustrated that they'll rephrase it in the minority language. The important thing, at least to me, is that you're not letting these um, majority language words just slide. You know, you're not chastising your child for it, you're not punishing them, you definitely don't want them to get negative feelings around using the majority language with you, 
but just use it as a teaching moment. You can actually talk to them about which language to use with which parent as long as it's in an age appropriate way. Even now, my son who is approaching two years old, I can say things like, you use daddy's word for book, what's mommy's word? He's gotten better and better at using this particular word with me. I know I talk about this tip a lot on this channel, but it is so important. You can stack things to your advantage. You can put target language books in the places where the opportunity to read strikes the most frequently. For example, in our situation, it turns out that the best places to read with my son are actually his bedroom, really, because in the morning he just seems really interested in reading, and then in the evenings, right before bed, he really likes to read. However, in the playroom, as soon as we come down the stairs, he gets distracted by all of his other toys, and he's not as interested in reading. But when my husband comes home at the end of the day, suddenly he asks to read books. So I have a lot of English language books in the playroom, but probably about 75% of our French language books are in his room. But that said, you want to be prepared for any time the opportunity to read strikes. So I have French language books all over the house. I have some in the living room, I have them of course in the playroom, in his bedroom, I have them in the basement, I even have them in the car. So I always make sure that I have some books in French on hand at any time the opportunity might strike. But that said, reading doesn't have to be passive. So as you're reading, make sure to involve your child. You can ask them questions like, what do they see? Um, what's the color of this? What shape is that? You know, you can keep them engaged. It doesn't have to be a one-way thing. If my son does come to me with a book and I can't convince him to read a French language book, I just talk about the pictures and what we see on the page and maybe even make up a story. Of course, he's um, only two. He can't read yet, so he doesn't quite know that I'm just kind of making things up. But at least for now, it's just a quick uh, way that I can keep using the minority language with him and keep him interested. But of course, it's also important for your child to speak, not just you. So one of the things I do every day is to make sure that there's plenty of opportunity for him to speak throughout the day. One of my favorite ways to get him speaking is by taking something um, that we're reading or a familiar song and just leaving certain words out and waiting for him to fill the gap. We'll do this with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the alphabet song, but also his favorite books. I find that this is actually a really great way to get some of his vocabulary that I know he understands but he's never spoken into his productive vocabulary. Another thing that I do every day is to try and narrate what I'm doing. If there's a time where he's not interested and he's not really speaking and I have nothing to talk about because my hands are busy, I'll just narrate what I'm doing. I'm cutting this butternut squash. Look, it's orange. Isn't it delicious? Don't you like it? And the nice thing about that is it also leads to the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is conversation. La courge musquée. La dente. Oui, qu'est-ce que je veux faire avec ça? Couper. Oui, je vais le couper. On va manger ça. Bleu. Bleu, oui, je dois le peler. C'est de quelle couleur ça? Orange. Orange, oui, tout à fait, orange. We have conversations every day, and this is really important for reinforcing the minority language because, again, it gets your child into productive mode, and also interaction is the gold standard of how to learn a language. You can try to provide open-ended questions to your child. However, if you're afraid that they don't quite have the language they need, it's okay to give them um, a couple choices to choose from. Just make sure that you're giving them enough wait time. So I try to wait until my son makes a guess or sort of gets distracted and starts walking away before I fill in the gaps for him. Sometimes um, he surprises me with a very late but correct answer. So just give it a try if you haven't already. Okay everyone, those are the seven things that I do every single day 
to reinforce the minority language at home. If you found these tips helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe the video. And also don't forget to give me a comment. I read every single comment, so I would love to hear from you um, about the other things that you do every day to reinforce the minority language. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.